The views of the guest are that of the guests and do not represent nor reflect the views and opinions of the Lockout Men channel, the recruiter call channel, nor its host. This site content is for entertainment, educational, and informational purposes only. That I was contemplating and how I really felt about my life at that time. And um, a lot of people... A lot of people don't necessarily want to in their lives, but if they don't feel like they're wanted or needed, cared about, loved, thought about, then they feel like, what does it matter? Nobody's going to miss me anyway. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Today's episode is sponsored by The Ridge Wallet. More on them later. And I know it's a tragic, it's a tragic situation, but basically it's, it's more geared towards the suicide rate in black men. Uh, that's where the focus is at. And I, I, I know a lot of the people on social media right now is, is pretty much focusing the point that this young man was found in a, in what they perceived another sundown town, Rose City in Orange County, Texas, a few few blocks down from Beaumont, right? That's how she said to pronounce it, Beaumont. Beaumont. Yeah, she said Beaumont. Beaumont. Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont. Okay, I, I said it right the first time. Beaumont. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I don't know. I I heard that. Beaumont, Texas was a sundown town. I, I never knew that because I, I I did plenty of loads in Beaumont. And there's a there's a couple of truck stops there as well. And I spent the night at the TA. There's a Loves right there. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a pilot over there. Right off of Route 10, going back towards Louisiana on my way out of Texas. Usually I take 10 into Texas going to Houston because I went to Houston like the back way or how the GS way and boy oh boy it took me through so many crazy ass small towns and every small town their speed limit freaking oscillates it goes from 55 to 35 in the blink of an eye <laughs> And if you if you miss it, there's a, there's a cop, a local sheriff, right behind those signs because they be pulling truck drivers over left and right because of course a lot of us don't pay attention. They'll turn around and be like, well, wait, I thought this was 55 miles an hour. Where where the sign? And the cop pointed out, be like, yes, yeah, right there. What behind the tree? So yeah, I, I stopped going through that little area right there, and I started just going straight down into Louisiana and then just take 10 over into uh, into Texas. Now, it's unfortunate that this young man was found unalived in Rose City. He was a truck driver, 31-year-old Evan Bryant. Of course, he was described by his aunt as a quiet, gentle, family-oriented individual. It's been almost two weeks since Bryant family learned that he took his own life and they was late to find out what actually happened. Uh, the aunt goes into detail of saying that he lost his grandfather recently and that could be one of the issues of his mental health. But mental health, we, we talk about it, but a lot of people slide over it when it comes to trucking. We're in these trucks every day, all day with our thoughts. I, I talked about that before. And it seems as though every time we come up and see another truck driver loses his life, either by natural causes or whatever the case that was going on in that truck driver's life, that was to the point that he couldn't just take it anymore. It's heartening, hard. Like if, if you don't have nobody to talk to, nobody to reach out to, nobody to vent to, that's why a lot of the truckers, they come on Facebook, they come on TikTok. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I've seen a post of yours. You touched a little bit about that. Do me a favor and go back to that. What was your thought process in making that post in Instagram? Looking for the perfect wallet? Meet the Ridge Wallet. With thousands of colors and styles, there's a Ridge for everyone. It is designed for everyday use, keeping your essentials organized without the bulk 
Whether you prefer the classic look or the bold look, you'll find a Ridge wallet that fits your style. Crafted with durable materials, the Ridge wallet is built to last with its FRID blocking technology, ensures your cards are safe, making it the perfect on-the-go lifestyle. Upgrade from your dad wallet to your new everyday carry. Discover the perfect match at ridgewallet.com. Embrace your style, functionality, and security. And don't forget, when you head over to the ridgewallet.com to make your first order, make sure you use my promo code YouTube10. With that, you would get 10% off your first Ridge Wallet. Thank you, Ridge Wallet, for sponsoring today's episode. Well, to be completely um, transparent, it was not my thoughts. Um, I shared a post that I saw on a friend's page that I believe she shared from another post. Whenever we see things related to suicide um, in my circle of friends, we share it because all of us have been affected by suicide in some way, form or fashion. So anytime we see, you know, things that are meant to bring encouragement um, to, to, to someone who might be considering it, um, that has not spoken out about it, you know, we share it because we're hoping that that person might see it at that right time. And instead of making that ultimate decision that they will then pick up the phone and call, you know, a family member, a friend, a confidant, you know, a, a, a healthcare professional, some, somebody to where we can redirect those thoughts away from suicide. So I shared it because there was, um, a couple of times in my life where I contemplated suicide. So it's something that is still very near and dear to me because I remember being in that mindset and how I, you know, was contemplating it. And I think the only thing that really saved me from it was the fact that I would talk about it. Um, I never shied away from talking about suicide, especially with a healthcare profession. And because of because I would hear myself voice it out loud, I think that it played a major part in me understanding the the decision that I was contemplating and how I really felt about my life at that time. And um, a lot of people, a lot of people don't necessarily want to in their lives. But if they don't feel like they're wanted or needed, cared about, loved, thought about, then they feel like, what does it matter? Nobody's going to miss me anyway. And um, so when we share these different posts like that, it's to be able to reach out to anyone who is being silent about having those type of thoughts um, to let them know that, hey, you are being thought about someone does love you and care about you someone someone does want to hear from you you're not in this by yourself as much as you think you are at one point you mentioned in the post that a lot of people will say that suicide is is a selfish move because people that they leave behind they don't care about their feelings and how it affect them and they people some people just felt that it's a selfish move on a person that unalived himself. But you 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 came back with a with, with a hard truth though in the post. It it touches on the fact that what you said that many people have mental illness, mental problems, depression. I feel it. I I I I, I have my bouts with depression all the time. Just driving down this this stretch of road and it just just comes out of nowhere. So in the post you felt that it's a terrible disease a disease i'm sorry and you said it's not selfishness which why would that be so true well again i can only give you my interpretation because i did not write this post right i only shared it but to give you my interpretation um people especially in the black communities we still have a lot of people who do who do not believe that having a mental health disease is a real thing you know um, we know that we go through hardships in our families, in our communities, 
in our employment, you know, in our relationships. We know that we go through these these trials and tribulations, but no one has ever connected that back to how it makes you feel um, mountingly as you go through those things. Because every time you go through a heartbreak or you go through a bad argument or you, you know, get turned uh, terminated from a job and now you're trying to figure out how you're going to take care of your family. Those are feelings that are, you know, piling up one on top of the other on top of the other. And it and, and so what it creates is a mindset where all you thinking about now is all of these negative things. You know, and so we just think it's just thoughts. And because we have family members, maybe friends, it's happened to me that say, you know what, you need to get over it. You know, it ain't that big of a deal. Nobody wants to keep hearing about that. Those type of re responses from the people that we try to reach out to is what makes the person withdraw into themselves even more so. And when you have somebody saying, don't nobody want to hear that, and then you don't have anyone asking, how are you doing? Do you need to talk about it? You you really start believing that nobody wants to hear about it. And so your cycle, your, 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 uh, your, your mind starts to, you know, you got that devil's advocate up in there that's saying, well, if nobody wants to hear about it, nobody cares about me. Um, they, you know, they say I need to get over it, but I don't know how to get over it. Then maybe I just don't need to be here. And then that's what starts cycling through their mind. And so, and from that point, every time another, they take another hit from a negative experience, that, that thought circles back around in their mind until it becomes an illness, but it's not a visible illness. So people don't know, don't know that a response is needed because it's not something that really shows outwardly. You know, they might be thinking, man, he always angry. She's always, she's always mad at the world. She, she got an attitude problem all the time not taken into consideration that, hey, maybe this person just might be going through something and has it all bottled up because they're not able to talk about it or vent about it. They just think you're walking around with attitude problems or you just mad at the world or you just a mean person. But the reality is inside you're holding on to a lot of thoughts and feelings that has that have not been able to to be released. And so that when that builds up to the point that you're so full, you're so full that it just becomes unbearable. Suicide is what happens. A statistic of black Americans that deal with mental health is about 39%. Only 21% get help. And you know that that number is only of what has been reported. Oh, let's hear what the yeah. young lady has to say. Hold on. So you have a lot of people that are suppressing, a lot of our black men are suppressing their issues until they explode. Professional counselor Trina Frazier says suicidal thoughts and feelings are a sign of vulnerability, something many black men are uncomfortable showing, but talking about it will prepare them to deal with it. I want to encourage our black men to understand that it'll, it is okay to not be okay, but you don't have to stay that way. I want. I agree especially men in general I'm, I'm not going to like categorize it or oh, it's black men white men i think it's men in general we we just have a tendency of keeping our thoughts bottled up you know what i'm saying and i think that's how issues become erupted when you don't when you don't release it. you you have all these pent up frustrations and then all of a sudden the wrong person just sets you off and then something tragic happens. That's why, listen, I, I walk. This is a social media era we're in. Everybody's recording. Everybody has their phones out. Everything, I walk just like somebody's recording. That's why I try not to, somebody come up to me with, with some ill intentions or anything like that. I just look at them. Okay, bro, let's, let's just keep it moving. Or if I see you in some situation or something like that, I'll be, hey, you, you good? If you don't say nothing to me, I, I'm not gonna push it. I'll just let I'll you just see that something's bothering you and maybe you wanna talk about it. If not, 
I get it. I'm I'm going to keep moving on because that's uh, that's what that's all, that's all it takes. It's just just take that one situation that will set any person, man, woman, black, white, just set them off just like that. Even set, even if you think that asking someone more than once is going to set them off, sometimes that that ignition needs to be that that uh uh what do you call it that um it need they need to be ignited because by them being able to now start vocalizing whatever is suppressing them, even if it's unrelated to you, you know how they always say you know. That wasn't about you. I was mad at somebody else or something else and I took it out on you. Well, we have to sometimes not be so afraid of of setting someone off if it means that we can get to the to the to the root of the problem. You know, I tell my friends, you know, certain families, certain friends, hey, um, if you need to talk, cry, cuss, scream, yell, whatever. And all you need is me to listen. Just be an ear. Just, just, just be there for you while you go through all of that. Just tell me what I. Just tell me what you need from me. And I think that a lot of people might be afraid to approach someone because they might not know what's the right thing to say, what's the right thing to do. The best thing that anyone can can say to another to a person in a situation where you think that that person might need to release is you know i i see that something's going on with you and i'm here for you just tell me what you need me to do but i'm not going to go away until you're better that's a good point i i i'm like this just be open if you're going through some things like me i call my son i call my my sister my moms and i let them know like hey i'm out here things going across my mind i just need to vent just need to cry yes i do cry you do yeah you don't call me but you know, it's, it's good that you know that you have those people. But like for me, I'm trying to create a new list of people that I can call because some of the people that I knew that I could pick up the phone and call and just say, hey, I need to vent. I need, I need to get this shit out of me. They're not here anymore or they're no longer a part of my life. So now I'm, I'm like, who do I turn to? Hold on. So I was just saying that um, I have to create a new, I have, I have to create a new list of people that I can call because some of the people that I used to know, like if I was angry, if I, if I was, you know, if I was just feeling a certain way, if I was just feeling full that I, like you said, need to cry. I had a list of people because sometimes talking to one person ain't enough. Hold on. What's going on, guys? I just want to stop the video right here, right quick. If you guys made it this far into the video and you guys like what you're hearing, go ahead and hit that like button for me, bro. Hit that like button. It's free. It's free. If you made it this far into the video, man, make sure you hit that like button. It's right up under the video, man. And if you guys like more content like this, consider okay y'all got two options well one but two options you can either subscribe for the channel for more and if you really want to rock with me and get the videos early make sure you join join the channel all right shout outs to all my members of the channel that rocks with your man thank you very much now let's get back to the show sometimes like i know for me especially if whatever is going on with me has me angry i have to talk to like four five people before i get it all out of my system and i can say okay i'm good now i can let this go because you know sometimes things happen to us out here in society and it's not as simple as having one conversation and somebody's saying well you know that's messed up but tomorrow's a new day blah 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 because no because sometimes we need to look i don't talk your ear off but I, I still i still got more in me to let out let me call so and so i used to have like five people on the list you you need somebody to tell you right. you, you need somebody to, to to speak to to let them know what's bothering you oh this is and basically a lot of people don't have that this is basically an issue that you're that you're having and Right. It, it may seem like you're ex exposing your weakness. That's why you gotta have people you trust. 
trust. And, and, and that's where sometimes having a complete stranger can help because there are a lot of people who don't have family or friends that they feel like it's safe to turn to, to, to tell them how they're feeling and know that these people are not going to take it and use it against them and run and, and talk about it to everybody and stuff like that. So sometimes that's where I say a stranger can sometimes be the best, um, medicine, the best, the, the best person to talk to because they don't know you. They don't know anybody that knows you. And they can be, you know, they're not going to be judgmental. They're just going to, you know, they're not going to be biased or any of that. They're just going to be somebody that you can, that has opened themselves up to you to let you get out whatever it was you needed. And, you know, we always say sometimes God put people in our path for a reason. Right. And sometimes that reason is because you never know that that stranger you might, you know, open up to might be able to help you in your time of need in, in other ways that you weren't even thinking. We have to remember that when we're going through a struggle, if we don't feel we can reach out to a family or friend, don't be too afraid to reach out to a stranger. Here on the Blackout Man podcast, we want to send our condolences to the young man's family, Evan, Evan Bryant. Bryant. Evan Bryant, a 31-year-old yeah. truck driver, unfortunately, he unalived himself. At least that's the information that we're that we're getting right now. He was a father, truck driver, son. Rest in peace to his grandfather as well. If anybody out there that needs somebody to talk to, there's the number. There's a, the suicide number, the national suicide number. Feel free to to call them up and get help. Get help from a better help the therapist the online therapist i believe you could probably reach out to them free of charge if it's suicidal situations i want to encourage not just our black men but men women our young people to take the time to get to know yourselves take the time to treat yourself how you want to be treated it is okay to not be okay but you don't have to stay that way i want you guys are worth healing let us know in the comments below so that you can leave a rest in peace to this young man and and reach out to somebody and just say hey how you doing it doesn't help to to reach out to that person even that person that you don't even talk to or haven't talked to in a while and you just feel it in your heart to reach back out to that person if it's not that serious because i i know there's a few people out there that when they cut them off they cut off but i'm just saying if y'all just happened to just drift apart and it wasn't nothing serious reach back out to them and see how they doing let people know yeah. let people know how you doing